In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of one of my burlesque photo shoots and show you how I use four strobes to give the look of stage lighting, even though it's just in my studio. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and I love shooting burlesque because it's theatrical, it's dramatic, it uses bright colors, dramatic, hard lighting. And these are all things that I am inspired by. Now, pretty much every year, I run a burlesque workshop here in my studio, and I invite you to join. And this photo is one of those images made during my workshop. You now in the workshop, the idea is to show posing and lighting and drama, but also to have an amazing opportunity to create stunning images with professional burlesque models. All right, so let's take a look at this shot. Now in this image, uh, the idea here was, the subject was almost like she was stepping out onto the stage. She came through the opening in the curtains and she is doing her opening greeting to the audience. So how can I take a small set in my studio and give it that depth and that drama and, and give it a feeling of, of being really grand without spending a lot of money or working in a really large space. So let's take a look behind the scenes. Now, first and foremost, let's talk a little bit about my set. I was using red velvet curtains. I bought these on Amazon and I held them up with C stands and C stand arms. And I used them to adjust and kind of have them open and close so they'd have a little bit of texture and then an opening in between. Now my thought process would be, if you could see the stage behind the subject, it would probably be pretty dark. So we hung a black background, just Savage Universal black paper directly behind those curtains. So that is the essentials of what I needed for my set. Not overly complicated, but the part to give it depth and to bring it to light is of course, the lighting. So let's take a look at that. All right, so our main light is actually over here on the left-hand side. The main light on my subject is a Profoto D2 with a 20 degree grid. So what that means is they have a hard, concentrated pop of light on my subject's face and torso. Uh, the reason I chose this is I, I figured if the subject's stepping out onto stage, stage lights are, are very hard. It, something like a softbox or a beauty dish wouldn't really suit the quality of light of a performance on stage. So that's why I grabbed a 20 degree grid. But I grabbed a 20 degree, which is a little bit wider, so that I wasn't just lighting her face, I'd get a little bit more of her body. Now you'll see that there's actually another strobe with that really bright burst of light that's peeking out behind the subject, where the subject was standing. This is another 20 degree grid. Now, the reason I added this light is originally when I had the subject standing there, she wasn't popping out enough from the background. So this light acts as a backlight and as a rim light. Now, the reason that it gives you that starburst effect is because I was using a four point star filter. And so this gave a little bit more of the theatricality that I wanted to the stage. So those are our first two lights, our main light on the subject, and then the rim background light behind to give the subject a little bit of separation. All right, so next to the scene. Because I was using a grid, the entire body of my subject wasn't lit. It was a little bit more just kind of the top part of her body. And so that's why I added to the right-hand side of the frame a large umbrella with diffusion. Basically, this is just a big, broad, soft light source. I could turn it up if I wanted a little bit more fill on the subject and her legs, or I could turn it down if I wanted it to be more subtle. Now, we made sure that we used a lot of lotion on the subject's legs so that they would pick up the light and would shine. Otherwise, they might look just a little bit dull in this scene. So that is light number three, but how about number four? To the right-hand side of the frame, I have a medium umbrella with diffusion with a red gel. The reason I used this was I wanted a kiss of red on the right-hand side of the subject because I thought going with a, a little bit of color uh, would emphasize stage performance. It'd make it a little bit more fantasy, less reality, and often you would see colored lights on a stage. Now, uh, using a medium umbrella with diffusion is because it's what I had available, but I could easily have done the same thing with a one by four foot strip softbox for a similar effect. So, so far, I've got my main light, a rim light, a background light to pop the subject out, a side light to give her a kiss of red on the side away from the main light, and then a large umbrella with diffusion to fill in the shadows. Now, before we go back and look at the shot again, uh, uh, let's talk a little bit of the camera that I was using. I was using the Canon R5 and the 24 to 70 millimeter lens shooting at f11, uh, 1 200th of a second, ISO 200. Let's actually though, take a look at the shot. All right, so this is what I achieved straight out of camera. Here's the deal. I think that shot is totally, totally usable. 
I, I could do no post-processing on it at all. I didn't add contrast, I didn't add color, I didn't change anything. But let me just show you real quick what each of the lights are doing. So you can see that her face, all the way down to kind of the, just above her knees, the top of her thighs, um, that's what's lit by that 20 degree grid. But the majority of that light is really just hitting her face and her shoulders. So that's kind of the, the tight area of light. Then you can see a very subtle kiss of red to her leg on the right. That is that medium umbrella with diffusion on the right hand side kissing uh, the side of her leg. Then in the front, I have a large umbrella with diffusion. That's what's filling in the shadows down towards the bottom of her legs. I have it very low power because I want the attention to be to her face. And then lastly, you see that little bit of light uh, kissing the side of her headpiece and separating her out from the background, giving that little sparkle on the top there. That is the 20 degree grid from behind. Now, what did I do in post-processing? Well, all right, first of all, some of the things that I would analyze that I would do in this shot, as I do want to extend the floor out a little bit on the bottom, I only had so much fabric, so you can see I need to bring it out a little bit more. Um, I thought that maybe there was a highlight on the curtain on the right-hand side here that was a little bit distracting, so I would darken that down. Um, but to be honest, she needs very little retouching, and I like the color as is. However, I thought that this burlesque shot had a little bit of a vintage feel to it. It felt a little bit out of a different era. So once I did my basic skin cleanup, I also went into Alien Skin exposure. In Alien Skin, I went through some of their different vintage uh, film presets. And I used one of them that I thought made the, the shot look a little bit aged, a little bit more painterly, popped the skin tone a little bit. But I didn't use it on full effect. I backed it off to about 50%. So you can see a few things that went on here right? I'm able to have a little bit more attention to her face. And then the other thing is if you look at her legs, we did go through and lighten them up a little bit. And then I also played a little bit around with contouring, popping the highlights so the legs would look a little bit shinier. But overall in the tonalities, you could have picked a totally different approach. You could have gone with something that looked much more vintage, or you could have gone with something that was more modern, colorful, uh, maybe go with something more desaturated. But in this case, I went with something that looked a little bit more filmic to give it that vintage burlesque vibe that I th thought fit her costume. I think this shot looks beautiful. And one of the reasons that it looks beautiful is because it was a group of people working together. It's a professional burlesque model. Uh, it is professional hair and makeup, a costume designer who made these beautiful pieces. And everyone worked together to do their part. And so the lighting was kind of just the cherry on the top to bring it all together. Now, if you want to join one of my burlesque workshops, be sure to visit learnwithlindsay.com. If you go to the events section, you can see a list of my hands-on intensive workshops. These are small group events with amazing hair, makeup, and wardrobe, and you're able to create images just like this one. So if you wanna see the gear used in the making of this photograph, be sure to check out the links in the description below and visit adorama.com. And of course, if you like this video and you wanna see more of my photo deconstructions, be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time, guys.